Hi, let's talk about how to test a capacitor. There are different kinds of capacitors. Some of them, they have the shape of discs and others like kind of uh, pillows and another like cylinders. These ones, they are ceramic capacitors and they have very low capacitance. The other ones, they have from low to almost low capacitance and the electrolytic capacitance, capacitors, they have very large capacitance. Electrolytic capacitors, they have a line marking where the negative should go. The unmarked area is the positive. Supposedly, it doesn't matter in the other kind of capacitors, but we will talk about it later. When you need to replace a capacitor, what is important is to replace the same amount of capacitance in microfarads. The voltage could be the same or could be higher if the mechanical structure uh, fits on the place. So remember, capacitance must be the same, voltage could be higher or the same. One more important thing about it is the temperature that the capacitor resists. Uh, let me see if I can focus here. For this one, it says from minus 40 to 105 degrees Celsius. Some capacitors, they resist 105 and another, they work until 85, like this one, 40 to 85 degrees Celsius. So when you're going to replace a capacitor, always check the temperature because it matters. If you're going to buy capacitors to keep it stored for the next time you need it, buy the high temperature ones. So you can use in either case. To make timers or to make uh, pulses in electronics or for frequency or clocks, we use the combination of any one of these capacitor with a resistor. As higher the resistor, the longer the time it takes to charge. The lower, the faster. But from all these kind of resistors, the capacitors, sorry, I recommend to use these kind of capacitors because they have more precision when we try to make a circuit for timing. So these two guys, in combination of transistors, uh, electro uh, integrate circuits, you can make a good timing system. To test a capacitor, you will need to remove the capacitor out of the printer circuit board. One, two, discharge the capacitor. Remove the capacitor from the circuit, printer circuit board and discharge the capacitor and now you are able to make the measurement of the capacitor with a capacitance meter. You can use any kind of device for it. There are some very expensive, $4,000, $6,000. Uh, mine is the cheapest I could get in the market because my budget was so small for it. Did I mention you have to discharge? Okay. How do we discharge? Capacitors like this one who has no bend in the the circuit board after a measurement with a short circuit like this. Just another piece of metal between the two leads and that's it. But when we have capacitors like these ones, as example, this is a capacitor for 200 volts. Probably it was in a switching power supply charging in 160 volts or more. <coughs> like this one. So after connecting this guy and removing the capacitor, you have to discharge. The way to discharge a capacitor like this is with a resistor and try to do it before to remove the capacitor. Use a resistor and don't hold it with your fingers because sometimes the high voltage will make the resistor to heat. Put it 
some while, be patient until they discharge. That's the way to discharge big guys like this and avoid problems with, the, with them. There are another kind of capacitors, and we'll talk about it in a little while. Guys like this, they're surface mount devices, and they're little capacitors. As we have them in our tablets, laptops, smartphones, or any new technology uh, equipment, they are coming in this presentation. They could be high capacitance too. Back to capacitors. Did I mention that for electrolytic capacitors we have a market line telling us where the negative should go and the mark area is the positive one? And as it's saying, the other ones, it doesn't matter. Pay attention to the following thing. This capacitor has a mark. It's not an electrolytic capacitor. I will tell you what is it about. To make a capacitor, we only need two conductors. Put one in the front of the other, and now we got a capacitor. We can also create an insulation in between and it's a capacitor. But capacitors like them, they are material like this, roll it. And the outside paper, like this one, if I roll it, put it one lid in one side and one lid in the other, the outside paper will pick up radio frequency and we transmit noise to our electronic system. Many years ago, fabricants, they used to mark where is the outside paper in this lid or this other one for designers or manufacturers to know this lid has to go to the chassis, to the ground, to the lower impedance in the audio amplifier and the other one has to continue with the rest of the circuit in the load or the higher impedance in the amplifier or any electronic circuit. That is what is it about. Back to measurements. Once that we discharge the capacitor and remove the capacitor out of the printed circuit board, it's good always to make a short circuit on it, not with a resistor, just with a conductor, to make a total discharge, to ensure it is totally discharged. Our capacitor is 330 microfarads. As we say, the mark goes to the negative, the other lead goes to the positive. Now we have a reading about the, this device capacitance. To know if it is good or is bad, let me tell you, most capacitors they could be plus minus 10%, 20%, if it is in that average, is good. Another aspect that we have to pay attention is the following. When we have capacitors in a printer circuit board in a switching power supply, like this one is a switching power supply, if you see the surface of these capacitors, they look good, healthy. But when you see something like this, or this other guy, did you see that the skin, let's call the cover skin, is peeling out? It's because the capacitor was overheating and the plastic starts moving away. If the top of the capacitor is in flame, ready to pop out, to explode, in other words, or the skin move it away, just by that, save your time with the reading, and you know you have a bad capacitor. Another example, take a look to these guys. Do you see this suspicious guy and this other two? Okay, they are capacitors, 
who has been suffering because the temperature. There is a chance that a capacitor like this one or these other ones, they get in short circuit. This kind of capacitors, they could be high capacitance too. Sometimes they are connected as whatever it is in the pretty circuit board, but also there is a chance that one of the sides is touching the ground and the other is just continuing in its function, whatever it is in the circuit board. So, one technique to find out if there is a capacitor in short circuit is at the follows. Number one, we will need a multimeter like this one, or like the one you can get at home. And you must put it in continuity with the beep. So you can hear the beep when you make a short circuit between the leads. What we're we going to do is we're going to look for the ground, in that case, for me, it looks like a ground where the scroll was, and I will touch both sides in the capacitor. As you hear this one, it produces a beep. That means there is continuity about zero ohms from here to the ground. Now that I know this part touched the ground, the other shouldn't do it. If I get a continuity from the other side to the ground, that means this capacitor could be in short circuit or is in parallel with something that is in short circuit. If the capacitor gets in short circuit, we'll put a big area of the circuit in short circuit too. So the only way to find it out, because I will touch all of them and they will give me short circuit, not like this, that is good, but it will have continuity in both sides. I mean this and this other one, theoretically. What I have to do is I will use my soldering iron. I will touch one side of the capacitor and I will lift it up. It's the same way to make a measurement. The only way to make a measurement, remember we cannot make a measurement of capacitors on the board. We have to take it out or at least to lift up one of the sides. If I have a capacitor in short circuit, if it is one of them, as I said, probably it will put the whole area in short circuit. So I have to lift each one of them to see which one will release the short circuit, the one that released the short circuit, you will touch the other ones and the short circuit will be gone but the one who has the short circuit, let's put as example this one that is bigger enough to see it, we have continued, will continue with the continuity both sides. Let's watch the following video about how to remove one of the sides of the capacitor with the soldering iron.
Remember, there is a lot to study about capacitors. Don't use YouTube to learn what you think you have to know. The best source still being the books. And out of the books, I recommend you always go to study, get formal education. There is a lot you need to know. Go for it. It's worthy. It will pay you back. Thanks by watching it.